Hi there, I'm Keith Cauley, and this is Thrive on the Road, a Bridgestone America's podcast, and we are live at CES 2023 in Las Vegas, talking to a lot of our partners, some external leaders in industry that are moving the world of sustainable mobility along with us at Bridgestone. And this guest today that we're gonna talk with is Paul Mitchell, joining me here in Las Vegas. Paul, thanks for taking the time. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and Paul is the president of the Indy Autonomous Challenge. So That's right. race fans from across Bridgestone Stone and Firestone, IndyCar, or those who've been following this world of autonomous vehicles for the last couple of years. It's been a growing movement. We are now at Vegas, and there's a lot of excitement to get these cars on the track this week. Yeah, so Indy Autonomous Challenge, you know, began as a prize competition, an mm -hmm. idea, really, um, trying to bring back kind of the impact that the DARPA Grand Challenge had to, to launching the autonomous vehicle industry. And so we put a call out more than two years ago to universities around the world to develop software that would be capable of operating fully autonomous race cars mm -hmm. based on the Indy Lights chassis. Uh, Bridgestone's been an awesome partner. You know, we, we needed tire technology and nobody better Happy to, to provide, do that than, sure. than Bridgestone. Um, and so we had our first competition at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in October of 2021 and gave out a million dollar prize. And at that point we realized this was more than just a one-off prize competition and that we really had an opportunity to continue to advance technology, to expose a, a broad public to the, the idea of autonomous vehicles doing amazing things like yep. traveling at 170 yeah. miles an hour. And we're here at, at CES for what'll be our second autonomous challenge at, at CES. Yeah. And what's like your background? I mean, are you just a guy who's like super into autonomous vehicles and that innovation? Or how do you become the president of the IAC? Yeah, it's kind of kind of by accident. Um, so my background is more in uh, public policy, government, and really bringing together industry, academia, and government to work on nice. technology innovation projects. And, you know, autonomous vehicles, uh, it, it's not just industry that we need supporting it. You need government, right? Yeah. You need academia uh, and trying to get those three worlds to come together uh, has really been the, the challenge of making Indy Autonomous Challenge successful. So I, I am not an engineer. Uh, <laughs> I, we definitely employ some brilliant uh, well, engineers. I, I got to cross off a lot of questions over yeah, here now. Exactly, no, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I mean, I think when some people hear about it for the first time, they think maybe it's a hobbyist thing, right? Yeah. It's about robot, you know, software controlled race cars, no drivers, and it's just competition. But you kind of layered into it off the start. This is about a much grander vision, right? There's more behind it than just a competition competition on the track. That's right. So there's really three primary goals. The first is to advance uh, technology to, to help accelerate the commercialization of autonomous technology. Mm -hmm. And motorsports has always been a great way to prove out new yeah. hardware, new software. So you're pushing sensor systems, you're pushing tire systems, you're pushing supercomputers to the absolute limit. Uh, going beyond what most autonomous vehicle testing today is doing by, by going at speeds above 150 yeah. miles an hour. Um, the second goal is to get the best and brightest minds from around the world to be excited about working on autonomous vehicles. Um, our teams are made up primarily of computer science, AI, roboticists. They could work in any industry. They could go to work in aerospace. They could go to work in life sciences. And so the automotive industry that we all love so much, we've got to attract that talent uh, to focus on autonomous mobility. And, and then third is, is win hearts and minds. I think the general public looks at autonomous vehicles, they say, okay, a robo taxi, you know, maybe I can already drive myself. Why do I need the car to drive for me? They see a car go 170 miles an hour, uh, passing another car safely. That wakes them up to the idea that maybe autonomous vehicles in the future can can do things that I, as a human, can't do. Regu it's like uh, making it more relatable and something people watch racing. And it, exactly. if they can do it here, they can do it anywhere, exactly. right, to a degree. Exactly. Well, I think one of the exciting parts of it is obviously, like you said, bringing the, the college students, the, this is the up and coming minds of the future. I think we were talking, you've got nine teams who have come to Vegas. Yeah. They represent six countries from around the world. Some of these are combined teams, right? With like yeah. a university from the United States with some students from Italy Europe, or exactly. Europe. Um, I mean, that's got to be such an exciting part to, like you said, we need them in the industry, but to watch them develop and grow. Because, I mean, I don't know where I would have started at that age, but like they're in it and it's a whole different world of knowledge. Already. So, you know, if you walk up and down our paddock, there's there's probably about 150 to 200 people that, that make up 
these nine teams. Um, and most of them are PhD students. Uh, some of them, there's a few undergrads, really, really smart that undergrads. That makes me feel a little bit better yeah. than with the world that I was in at 18. Yeah. So. so most of them are PhD students, uh, full-time faculty. Um, and, uh, you know, they come from a diverse background. Uh, some of them don't drive cars, <laughs> which is amazing, right? Um, others are super into racing. They, they've been watching F1 since they were kids. All of them have some passion for robotics. All of them pretty much started in like robotics clubs in high school and kind of grew through that. And I think what Indie Autonomous Challenge really represents is an opportunity to take the excitement that we know is global around high school robotics competitions and take that to a professional level uh, that helps those STEM students become STEM superstars, really, uh, and prepare them for industry, prepare them to go into solving real world problems, working for companies like Bridgestone and, and others uh, is, is a big part of what we're doing. Yeah, I think that was an exciting part of it for Bridgestone. Uh, obviously, providing the tires, it's a racing world that we're familiar with, started with the original event at the Indianapolis Motor yep. Speedway, which we have great familiarity and yeah. expertise in tire design and testing and data from. Um, but it's, it's a list of big name companies, right? I mean, and that's it's bringing to the table industry leaders to help drive it forward with the kids. Yeah, so, you know, we have our sort of top level sponsors. Fortunate to have Bridgestone as one of those. We have uh, Amazon Web Services, Cisco, uh, Luminar, uh, Continental, um, uh, DSpace. Um, so it's, it's a mix of industry leaders who are providing their technology and their hardware uh, as well as their engineering support to these teams and to the India Autonomous Challenge. Honestly, there's no way we could do that without the contribution of the technology from industry. Um, so it's, it's truly a partnership between industry and these universities uh, to make this possible. The expertise of all the different areas yeah. brought together yeah. here, navigating. Uh, you, you had the initial event, there were pandemic challenges all oh, throughout yeah. like anything else in the world. Finally now to Vegas with a, a event as planned, so to speak, but what did you learn from doing the first event across all those challenges that you evolved or adjusted for this year's event? So I think um, we learned that the original uh, idea that you could just put uh, autonomous hardware and software into a race car and plug in a, a, a robot driver and tell it to go and it would go 100 Simple vision, miles an let's hour, go. Uh, was a lot harder, right? It's, it's, there's a reason why it's a grand challenge. Yeah. And so I think the, um, uh, the level of engineering that was required for the car itself uh, to work, to get these systems integrated into a very small form factor, the cockpit of an Indy Lights car is not a lot of space. Uh, and to have it work and be durable, even when we have wrecks. I mean, we've had dozens of wrecks at 130, 150 miles an hour, and you need that hardware to, to be able to hold up under those kinds of really tough operating conditions. Um, and it's been, it's been exciting to see that industry has responded by saying, okay, we, we also wanna see our technology capable of operating at high speeds, capable of being durable enough to withstand a major accident uh, and take that learning and hopefully bring it into the, the commercial industry for highway automation in the future. Yeah, and I think that's got to be part of it, though, is this is advancing very new technology that has a lot of growth in itself and its capabilities to go through. It's a long term game, right? It's not, it, you, hey, I learned that there's going to be a lot of wrecks last year. And so all of a sudden this year, it's not like, hey, we're not going to have any wrecks because we learned so much. But this is it's a, a, an example of the iteration process of any technology right, in right. a sense. And, right? and, and we made a big leap um, between the first event at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where really at that point, our teams were only capable of single vehicle operations. So high speed laps, time trial type of competition to now head to head racing. We did the first head to head yeah. race at, at, at CES last year. Um, and we're now starting to see the, the cars, the, the AI drivers, we call them, be capable of not just making overtakes, but doing crash avoidance, making maneuvers that look more or less like what you would expect a, a very talented human race car driver to operate. So the AI is getting better, but as that AI gets better, it also is going to lead to more more accidents, which is exactly what you see in, in traditional, traditional racing. So um, I, I think, you know, uh, our ability to continue to push the technology, you know, we are going to be transitioning from ovals to road courses. That's oh, going to nice. be another big leap. And I expect that as we make that transition and we're going to Monza uh, okay. to, to run a race uh, this, this uh, upcoming June, nice. uh, it's two year partnerships. So we'll be back there again in 2024. And if you think about 
what it means to race, race on an oval, it's mostly about high speed. You move to road courses and it's a little bit more about uh, overall strategy, braking, turning, which I think is gonna be a lot of new learnings that are gonna be more applicable to highway driving. Yep. Well, that's why I was, it seems like the more relatable thing to bring it into the consumer space. Correct. We're not going to be on an oval going at the speeds no. that they race at. Right. What, at least you're not you supposed know, to be. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it properly. Um, pure curiosity, what are like the speeds that they are seeing on the ovals right now as they do practice? Yeah, so um, we've been practicing at uh, 170, 175. Um, the car, we set a new uh, world speed record for an autonomous vehicle of 192 point two miles per hour, but that was a straight line test at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. Still so, counts. <laughs> so we know the car is capable of that speed. Um, I think with the right weather conditions, as you know, you kind of need it to be warm enough <laughs> yeah. for these tires but and not everything. not too warm, right. Not, not too warm. <laughs> So we do run at CES in January. It's not exactly ideal racing conditions. So I think, you know, if, if everything goes well, we'll see 170, 175. Um, but we know the car could could go faster than that. And I think at some point in time, somebody's going to go out there and, and push it and, and pull that 180, 190 mile per hour autonomous lap, which will be really cool to see. Yeah, you feel the energy in the moment. It's yeah. going well. You pull the trigger. Push it's it. good. Yeah. Well, I think the other part of it is this. It, you're doing it at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, which is kind of known just for being all this groundbreaking stuff. I, what was the, I guess, focus on getting it in here last year? But why is it so important to be a part of this event? And what do you look for at this event out of it? Well, when we first debuted the car, um, it was in the middle of the pandemic. There was it was the virtual CES year. Um, and there was a, an awesome response. Media was interested in it. Those who were participating as virtual attendees, you know, were emailing us questions and saying, you know, when can we see this car? So we just realized that the crowd at CES is, is looking for technology at the cutting edge, right? The, the autonomous vehicles have become such a big part of CES. And so what better venue to, to showcase this technology than to an audience that's really into it and really aware of it. It doesn't mean that traditional motorsports fans, sure. you know, don't tune in. And we do have some that are uh, really thrilled with what we're doing. Um, but it, this is more of a technology exhibition event than it is a traditional, you know, motorsports race like you would find at the Indy 500 or a major NASCAR event. Uh, and so CES has been a great partnership and we love the organization. Uh, they've been great to uh, work with us to make the race actually part of CES, so all CES attendees can go. They're providing busing. So it really is a, a, a partnership between Indy Autonomous Challenge and CTA, the organizers of yeah. CES. Awesome, yeah. Well, I mean, we get questions all the time. Like, what does Bridgestone get out of this? I mean, but it's a lot of that same that we talked about. You see everywhere in our booth and the things that we've been talking about is this sustainable mobility, connected data collection, how it yep. all works together to drive predictive decisions. Yep. And we're learning at the same time through this as another avenue, which is fantastic. Yeah. And I, I think that one of the things Bridgestone's working on that's so incredibly important and we know is coming down the pipeline are just these intelligent tires, yep. right? So I often talk about the fact that um, you know, we have uh, perception technology in autonomous vehicles, which are, you know, LIDAR, radar, cameras, uh, GPS, uh, but they, they don't have the perception of touch. They don't have the perception of feel. And Bridgestone, Firestone knows a lot about what it means to have grip and have touch on racetracks. And that information is critically important. So us getting data on tire temperatures, us getting data on, you know, the, the grip that we're having when there's a slip, um, that is what is going to unlock the ability to get those autonomous vehicles to not just perceive their surroundings really well, but to understand what is happening where, no pun intended, but I guess where the rubber hits the road, right? There I mean, you go. And, and A phrase we like. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's exciting to learn. It's exciting to see this grow and, and excited to see it on a road course in the future. But thanks for taking a few minutes, Paul, to talk and share about it. And we're, uh, we're going to go watch it and see how it all comes together, awesome. man. Well, awesome. We're, we're, we're so appreciative of everything that Bridgestone does. And uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to play a part. And happy for our listeners to join us and hopefully learn a little bit about the Indie Autonomous Challenge. Reminder, you can listen to all of our episodes of Thrive on any podcast platform of choice. You can also watch the videos on our Bridgestone America's YouTube page. We'll have much more coming from CES 2023 as we keep rolling. Uh, and we always remind you at the end to keep on keeping on because today, tomorrow, together at Bridgestone, we thrive. Be good, everybody.